So welcome to Traveling with a Chair. In, in today's show, we're going to actually uh, spend some time talking about our recent cruise to Alaska. You can see a few of the pictures behind here. Um, well, my wife and I and my granddaughter just made the uh, journey from uh, Seward to Vancouver on uh, the Norwegian Jewel. We had uh, some amazing experiences along the way. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some of those. I'm going to take uh, time to answer your questions. Um, hopefully uh, you guys, uh, uh, actually let me start with this way. Um, thanks for joining me on the show today. And if you're there and can hear me, go ahead and hit the like button, uh, smash wow, just so that I have a uh, know you're there and that you can hear me okay. Let me see if I can pop out the dock. Anyway, I, I see there's two of you on. And okay, so and to to start with, a little bit about the the trip. Um, we started out in uh, out of Raleigh, North Carolina, on Saturday morning. And we stayed at the hotel uh, close to the airport. And it was kind of interesting that we were able to get a better rate staying at the hotel right there by the airport than we were able to get if we had uh, parked the car. And we had a 7.30 flight, which means that I'm one of these people that uh, likes to be at the airport early. I'd much rather be sitting at the gate for an hour than standing in line wondering if I'm going to get to the gate. And a little more about that as, as, as our story goes on. But it was a, um, we stayed at the hotel. We, we got up the next morning. We were at the airport at 530. Uh, everything went smooth through security. And uh, before long, we were off uh, from Raleigh to Seattle. Now, I booked round trip Seattle, uh, even though we're going to, to sail out of Seward. And then I bought a one-way ticket on Alaska because that was, uh, using Alaskan air miles and using uh, Delta air miles uh, resulted in, in, a, in a very good uh, method for me to get from here to there. Uh, but what it meant was, as we got to Seattle, I had to go out and change, um, I had to re recheck my luggage. And that was a real challenge. The, uh, the line at security, this was a Saturday of Memorial Day weekend, was almost an hour long. Uh, I had plenty of time, but I was starting to uh, feel very uncomfortable uh, with the. I was starting to feel very uncomfortable with the issues because um, the you know I was like, okay, how long is this line going to take? Is it was kind of like a line at Disney. You know, you get in the line and and you get to where you think you're going to go, be right where you want to go, and and nope, you're just in another segment of the line. Um, so I wound up, it was really, I can't really tell you um, how long it got behind us. I do know that talking to security coming back, they said at one point in time on that Saturday, it was across the street into the parking garage. That was the line to get through security. So for people that didn't plan, in fact, it was, it was interesting. There was a couple that uh, got out of line and I let them back in line, but they were uh, going to get to the entrance to the security area about the time their plane was scheduled to depart. And then they were wondering why, um, whether they were going to make it or not. And obviously the, the answer to that question was, nope, you're not going to make it. And you know, I'm sorry there was, you know, from our perspective, there wasn't anything we could do to help them. I felt bad for them, but I'm, like I said, I'm a firm believer and you get there early. Um, anyway, so we get into Anchorage and we get into Anchorage about 5 or 5.30. It's about 6 by the time we get to the hotel. And that's about 10 o'clock uh, in the evening Raleigh time. So we've had a very long day. Uh, I had thought we'd do some sightseeing in Anchorage. Uh, the only sight we wanted to see was the inside of our eyelids. We ordered food in. I stayed at a Staybridge Suite, which I, I really enjoyed. It's the only one in Anchorage. Uh, for the three of us, it was a very comfortable room. And put us in a position that uh, where we were, it was very easy to go uh, to get where we wanted to go the, uh, the next day for uh, the train. Uh, we ordered food in, we ate, we went to bed, and the next morning we got up, um, and we had to be at the train station at 545, which was 
another reason we went straight to bed in, uh, on Saturday night. Uh, we had really bad weather for the train ride, and even with really bad weather, the train ride was amazing. Uh, for a while, you're riding uh, right along, a, uh, let's see, nope, I, I don't have a picture, let's see if I've got, let me find my photo albums here, and um, I don't know what I, okay. Well, I've lost, seemed to have lost control of my photo album. But anyway, we're, we're riding along the uh, Turnigan Arm. Uh, so the, the road's on one side of us, uh, the train, and then the water, basically. So we're running right along the water. Uh, it was a magnificent views. Uh, if you've never done the train from Anchorage to Seward, uh, you've missed one of those uh, unforgettable experiences. Uh, so uh, the train turns inland. Uh, we booked the dome car, which we were really glad we did. We had a great viewing. We had an open air platform for taking pictures out the out the back, which uh, made it very nice as well. Um, like I said, it was raining the day we were on there, so uh, it impeded a little bit. Uh, you either had to deal with water on the lens or you had to stay back inside a little bit, which kind of obscured some of the shots you might have wanted. Um the train uh, runs through some lowlands, and then it go, starts to climb up uh, through the mountains. And as it's going, it goes through five tunnels, and, and they literally cut, chiseled this uh, train bed out of a cliff. And uh, there's rock on one side of you, and there's a gorge on the other side. Down in the bottom of that gorge is this amazing stream. I'm a fisherman, uh, yeah, and my first thought was, man, that looks like fishy water. My second thought was, is if you got down to it, you'd never get out of it because it's literally almost a sheer granite cliff going down. Uh, but it was, it was a gorgeous view, and uh, we crossed that river several times. That river actually started at the Spencer Glacier, which we would go by on the train journey, but because the weather was so bad, we weren't going to get the opportunity to really get a good sighting of Spencer Glacier. We knew where it was, um, and you could see the, a blob of white up there, but it was kind of obscured also by the rain and the clouds and stuff, so it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a really clear view of, of the glacier. And for those of you that like glacier views, I've got this is uh, uh, the Tracy Arm and the Sawyer Glacier in these um, uh, this, uh, line that you see right at the top. Uh, it was a, that was an amazing cruise in, and you look at the channel, that's what we were cruising the ship went through passages like that where you basically had rock both sides to get to this glacier. In fact, there were times it looked like the captain was sailing the ship right at, 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 at an island, you know, and then, the, then he'd jog around a little bit and work his way through. Um, our captain did an amazing job getting us up close to the glacier. But anyway, so uh, we get to the train, you get up to the top, and you start down and you run along the headwaters of the Kenai River, which is Lake uh, Kenai Lake. Uh, that was a, a gorgeous sight. The, the lake's got an unusual uh, color that you would see a lot. We would see a lot of this cruise. Um, hold on just a second here. Sorry for the interruption. Um, the Resurrection River for quite a while, and what the um, what we find is is that the uh, as we're sailing along the Resurrection River. I'm trying to see, let me, um, hold on a second. I was trying to see if I can find my comments. Anyway, as we're sailing along, uh, or cruising, traveling along the Resurrection River, uh, there was areas they said were really prime viewing area later in the year. 
um, the what the situation is is that there's uh, salmon that's run up there to spawn, and like I said, the the water's just right there beside uh, the beside the uh, train, and the bear will be in there feeding on the salmon that are up there uh, dying. So it's one of those things that uh, would be uh, really interesting later in the year. In, in our case, we uh, we missed it because uh, we were too early in the year. Uh, uh, there were reasons why we took it. And so we get into um, we get in, in down into uh, oh there we go. Now I have the chat window up. Can can you guys hear me okay? I'll chat and see if somebody's there. Um, please go ahead and hit the like or put a comment in for me so I just know that you're there and you can hear me. I know there's several of you watching, so um, hopefully that's working okay. Um, anyway, the so we get down into Seward, and we've planned a uh, whale watching, uh, life, uh, uh, wildlife viewing uh, cruise with Major Marine. And so we take a five-hour cruise, and so we take this cruise, and we have the opportunity to uh, to go out and to uh, travel around this, uh, well, it's basically into the Kenai Fjords area and Resurrection Bay. And the water was nice and calm. Uh, we got out right at the edge of the Gulf of Alaska, and it got a little rolly, and we had a few on the ship that should have been wearing sea bands or taking something a little earlier, um, but they didn't. So the end result was the, um, I'm sorry, I'm just checking to see. No chat, and I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Um, I hope you can. <laughs> the anyway, so we get into the um, uh, we go out and and as we're cruising around, the captain literally takes the ship up about two feet off of a rock wall, and he said there's still several hundred feet of water below us because these are again these are just sheer cliffs in some parts of this uh, bay. And we, um, we had the really nice opportunity to go ahead and um, get up close and personal. We saw some stellar sea lions. Uh, we went by this nesting area for um, a water burden, and I forget the name of it. I apologize. But it, there was this, it was a big rock sitting maybe, maybe 20 yards offshore, and it looked like it was snow-covered because there were so many of these birds that were making their nests on this on this uh, on this rock basically but it happened to be their preferred viewing and preferred uh, habitat uh, um, so we really enjoyed that it uh, was a gorgeous tour we uh, saw uh, at, at a great distance we saw some uh, doll sheep climbing up or mountain goats I'm not sure which actually uh, climbing up the side of, of a cliff by a waterfall uh, the captain stopped and we watched that we did see some whales on the trip uh, it was a cow and her calf. So it was all in all, it was a really nice trip. Uh, they did a really nice uh, salmon, uh, fresh salmon and um, prime rib um, buffet. It was all you could eat. Uh, they had great desserts. Um, like I said, we really enjoyed the trip. It was well worth it. When we got done with that, our, our next stop was to, um, we wound up going to uh, the Sea Life Center in uh, in Seward, which is a marine mammal research and rescue facility, and it was uh, it was really enjoyable. We had a chance, and all of this uh, these there will be videos on all of these on on my channel, but it gave us a, a really nice opportunity to go ahead and and get up close and personal and see the um. Let me see. Says there's messages. Hold on, I just need to check something here. We seem to be having some challenges. Let's 
Give me one second while I get to Let me just check something real quickly. Okay, anyway, so I was just checking to see if everything's okay. And again, if you can hear me, please go ahead and hit the like button or give me a comment so I, I know that I, my sound is working because. All right. And my sound is working, so let me kill that out or I'll drive myself nuts. Okay, so from Seward, um, as we sailed away uh, the next day, in the evening, we as we sailed away, I had a really great uh, view of Mule Glacier. It uh, terminates in the in a tidewater basin, um, a kind of little uh, lagoon that it's created by it pushing up the glacial melange, and uh, the, so this. But the view from the ship was great because you could get a in the distance you could see this long river of ice running up the uh, side of the uh, running up this valley. Uh, toward the uh, ice sheet up above it so that was an amazing um, it was an amazing view uh, really enjoyed it um, I am taking questions so anybody that has a question please uh, feel free to go ahead and pop your question up and I, I would be glad to answer it um, except now I've lost my question box okay Give me one more minute. To go back where I need to go. And Let's do this. I'll mute that. That way I don't hear myself. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so if you have any comments, please, or any questions, go ahead and post them, um, and I will answer them. I was just trying to make sure I could get where I could see them. Anyway, so as we had this great view of the, uh, the, of the glaciers, we sailed out. Our next stop on our cruise went to Hubbard Glacier. And... Uh, it's kind of interesting. Hubbard Glacier is the largest tidewater glacier in Alaska. It's about eight miles wide. Uh, so it's this amazing wall of ice that terminates in the ocean there. Um, the captain got us up really nice and close to it. Uh, there was another ship that was off a little farther. We got inside of that. There were some kayakers that were in that general area as well. Uh, we didn't see any huge calving, um, but it would very much be... Uh, one of those things that would be uh, amazing if, the, if there'd been some big calving. It was again a, a cold, rainy day. One of the things I will say is is that when you're glacier viewing, you want to be outside so that you, if it does calve, that you can hear it and you have the opportunity to um, to record the sound and, and to experience it. Uh, the we were on the Jewel and she has a great observation lounge. And a lot of people, because it was a cold, rainy day, were inside. Um, I elected to brave the elements. And so a lot of the video I have has uh, water droplets on the lens, but it, that is what it is. Um, and like I said, it's just amazing that you can see uh, a river of ice that wide. Um, the It was kind of interesting, too, in that the um, Murray Lundberg, who's an expert, said that really... Um, Hubbard Glacier is a better place to visit glaciers than Glacier Bay. Glacier Bay gets all the praise, but in reality, he said that it, it's just amazing, uh, and I concur that um, Hubbard Glacier is just, it's, there's nothing like it. Uh, again, it was a rainy, gray day, so it wasn't as good as it could have been. 
um, the the um, we were there probably I bet we were probably there for close to an hour the captain turned the ship all the way around and actually I went down to my uh, balcony room and and got out of the rain and got some more video um, it was uh, like I said it was it was amazing from there we went to icy straight point um, icy straight point is a uh, really kind of a quaint little town the the tourist area there is run by a Native American corporation and it's the town's a couple of miles from Huna. Now, on the, on, in the port area itself, there's quite a bit to do. There's a, a nice museum. There's um, a crab restaurant. There's a couple of other restaurants there, so there's places to eat. There is a really uh, interesting ropes course. And it's kind of funny because there's a nature walk that goes back into this rainforest. Uh, and it's a temperate rainforest. The what happens is that the, uh, you have this. Basically, there's a canopy of trees, and so they put a ropes course in there. And the ropes course uh, was really long. It's probably the longest ropes course I've ever seen. And and I forgot to mention it earlier, but they also had a zip line that uh, was amazing. I have a a photo of where the house is, and it looks like a like a ski lift kind of uh, operation up at the top and they take you up in a bus and you ride the zip line down and then they retrieve the the the, um, the carts but it was uh, and they run about I think they can run as many as six people at a, at a time down it, it said it was it was fun to watch we didn't have the time my granddaughter and I we were going fishing there doing some halibut fishing and uh, I, we did some halibut fishing we didn't do any halibut catching there's a reason they call it fishing um, I was hoping she she's not a very big girl, and I was hoping she'd catch one about her size, but it wasn't to be that day. But we had a great day on the water. We saw whales, um, and it was just the water was calm. It was a nice sunny day. We had a, had a great time there. From Icy Strait, uh, we went. Uh, our next stop was Juneau, where we did Mendenhall Glacier. Uh, the Mendenhall Glacier is, is amazing. And it's one of those glaciers that's just absolutely vanishing. And if you've never been to Mendenhall, it's uh, it's a glacier that you can get up pretty close and personal with. Uh, you're probably oh maybe a quarter of a mile now. Uh, that's just my guess from because there's a river there. And if you if you cross if you went hiked over the river uh, up above, you might be able to get closer than we were. But we were at Nugget Falls, and we were close enough to Nugget Falls. You could feel the spray coming down. We were right at the base. Um, and it pours into Mendenhall Lake. Um, that was an amazing uh, sight in and of itself. And uh, they had a, a time lapse uh, photography there of how Mendenhall is retreating, and it's just amazing. When that visitor center was built, um, they said you could just about reach out and touch the glacier from the visitor center. And now the glacier is probably a half or maybe um, three quarters of a mile away from the visitor center. And I'm just guessing on the distance, but it, it's a long ways. And when it used to spill over the top of this rock, now it feeds between the rock. And at some point in time, you're not even going to be able to see the glacier from the visitor center. Uh, so it's now's a good time to visit it while you can still do that. Uh, we have done some other things in, and I'm taking questions if you have any. I don't, um, I haven't seen any questions so far. I, I do appreciate the the like. Thank you for that. Um, anyway, so um, we did Mendenhall, and that was pretty much all we had time for. We had a really short port stop in Juneau. Our next stop was Skagway, and what we elected to do, um, and we had, did, had done this before, uh, both from a financial reason, but also there's some just amazing things if you run a car and drive up into the Yukon Territory. In our case, we rented a, um, just one second here. Um, so we rented the um, a car and we drove up, uh, used Murray's Guide to the uh, South Klondike Highway. And it's, it's uh, a, an amazing description of what you'll see along that path as you travel up from uh, Skagway 
uh, up into the Yukon Territory. And, and the climb up is, is extremely steep. And it's interesting because White's Pass is where almost all the 49ers that were headed into the Klondike Gold Mining area, they had to go over White's Pass. And to be safe, to be able to survive a year up there, they were supposed to pack in about a thousand pounds of gear. And I can't even imagine what it was like, uh, you know, pack mules trying to go up this really steep cliff. Uh, and the, the Yukon, there's a railway that goes up there too. Highway's kind of on the other side of the, of, the, of the valley. But it's an incredible drive up. And then when you get up on top, the terrain is just so different than anything you've ever seen. Um, at, at the highest levels, there's very you're kind of above the tree line. There, there's very little bit in the way of trees, and then you go into this area of, it's like a, I guess a glacial moraine types of lakes where there's like small lakes all over, and then you start to run into some bigger lakes and, and places where there starts to be running water. Now we stopped on the way in at Michelle Phillips. Um, she has a sled dog uh, training camp up there, and in the summertime, instead of, uh, of pulling sleds because there's no snow, they actually pull uh, four-wheeled uh, little four-by-four vehicles. And so that's what you get to ride on. And it, it's amazing. People sometimes think that sled dogs are being mistreated having to pull sleds. These dogs wanted to pull that uh, vehicle so bad. There, she had four teams there that day. And, and the team that they were harnessing to ours uh, were all leaping with excitement and pulling against us even when we were parked, not even ready to go yet. They were wanting to go. And the other three teams were just raising cane because it wasn't their turn. Um, those dogs are born to, to run, and they loved it. Um, it was amazing. She had a really nice course that they, they took us through. Uh, so up and down hills, uh, stopped and let them get in the lake there, or not a lake, but a little pond so they could cool off. And the, the ones that couldn't get to the pond, they had uh, little swimming pools they could get into to get cool because that's – the concern in the warmer days is keeping the dogs cool. Um, they had uh, puppies up there, so we got to play with a couple of litters of husky pups, which was, um, again, such cute dogs. Uh, we, had a, we had a great time there. My granddaughter loved it. it it's perfect for kids. Um, and my granddaughter and I did some gold panning. Now, I will say that this is not serious panning for getting rich. Uh, you get a little bag of sand that's got some gold flecks in it, and you pan. And uh, in, in our case, both pans had seven flecks of gold in them. And he, he said that was all. So you're basically getting a little dab of gold that is already known to be in it. But it was a lot of fun to go through the process and, and see how how you did it to, to get the sand out and keep the gold. And my granddaughter went home with 14 flakes of gold that uh, she will do something with to, to commemorate her trip. And it was well worth it. Um, while we're up in the in the Yukon Territory, we did the Carcross Desert, which is the world's smallest desert, and we did Emerald Lake, which is an absolutely glorious lake. It is there's nothing like it, and we were fortunate this time to hit a, a sunny day. It's supposed to be one of the most photographed lakes in Canada, and um, I can see why. Again, we'll have video of all of this uh, be posted here on my YouTube channel. Uh, for those of you that haven't subscribed, please do so. You're going to want to see all of the uh, the amazing things we saw in Alaska. Well, between my granddaughter and I, we shot uh, 1,200 pictures and video clips. A lot of them, you know, won't make it won't make the cut to be on videos, but uh, there'll be a lot of things that you'll get to see and do. Um, so from Skagway, our, our next stop was Ketchikan, and and Ketchikan was. Uh, it's a really small port. There's not a lot to do there. I mean, it's a pretty good sized town, but the port area is eminently walkable. Um, we went over to Creek Street, which is uh, the uh, used to be the seedy part of town, we'll call it. There we go. We'll call it the seedy, but it's built right along a creek. And in, when the salmon are running, that creek, they said, just turns red with, with salmon running up it. Again, we were early in the season. If you want to see the salmon, you want to go in, in uh, July or in, maybe in August, those kinds of time frame. Um, we wanted to go when the, it wasn't quite so crowded and when uh, uh, we could find a really good deal of bargain price on it. And I thought I got a good deal, and then uh, right before we left, the price dropped to 229 I, 
I was just about crying, but we'd had to buy last minute tickets, so it worked out. And we had, a, like I said, if you've never been to Alaska, I don't think there's another place you can go on the planet that is as enjoyable as going to Alaska. Um, in Ketchikan, we did our only, uh, the only excursion we bought through the ship. Um, we did a uh, wilderness lodge adventure and seafood bank uh, or seafood feast. Uh, we got uh, went to uh, a marina. Bus picked us up. We went to the marina. Now my wife travels with a wheelchair, and so they were well set up to handle it. The bus wasn't didn't have a lift, but my wife was capable of getting up the steps into the bus without a problem. They had handicap seating right at the front for her. Um, and then when we got to the dock, it was a pretty steep thing down. Uh, they offered to help, but I was like, I, I can manage this going down. Uh, coming back, they actually had a cart they used to, to get her up to the top, uh, like a um, little utility vehicle uh, with a, um, a place she could ride uh, going up, and I just pushed the empty wheelchair up. But uh, it was it was amazing. We really enjoyed it. Um The one of the things that we did do um, that was really neat was they had a boardwalk, which made it really nice for individuals that were handicapped to be able to uh, travel in on this boardwalk and see the. Um, got a comment here. I was just checking on. Okay, so you should have a place down at the bottom where you can add a comment. Um, somebody asked me about how to get a comment. Oh, uh, I see now Ronnie Hutchins. And I apologize. I got got busy talking and stopped looking at the questions. Um, so did I take the train the morning of your cruise? No, I did not. I went in the night before. I, I will tell you this. If you have already firmed up your reservations, Seward is a place that you're going to like spending some time. We really love some time in Seward. You can take the train in if the cruise ship does a transfer that um, you know that'll take you directly from the airport to get on. Uh, they get you to the train station from the train station to Seward to the ship, and so you can do it the day of. Um, I'm one of these people. I never, I never ever travel in the day of, uh, just in case something goes wrong. I I like to be in the port city the night before. And like I said, if I had it to do over again, uh, Ronnie, I would spend the night in Seward uh, for two nights just so I could do a little more there, including fishing. Seward's probably the, uh, might be the best uh, place there to go fishing, and, and I didn't have the opportunity to do that, and I wished I had. Um, anyway, so we did this walk in um, uh, on this uh, excursion. We walked in to the uh, rainforest and, and it's a nice boardwalk it's all it was easy for me to push my wife in, uh, in the wheelchair and you go back in and there's a uh, about a 1200 I think year old cedar tree that's about 40 feet across it's the oldest largest known uh, of this particular cedar in Alaska and uh, it's just well protected because there the problem is not fire the problem is wind but it's it's buried in the heart of the forest and so they have this this a uh, boardwalk that literally takes you out there. Um, it's a little bumpy, but it. My wife was quite comfortable in the wheelchair uh, doing that, and so that was an amazing piece of our trip. We really enjoyed that. The seafood feast was interesting. It's more like a kind of like a southern seafood uh, boil because they had clams and mussels and shrimp and crab and uh, corn and new potatoes and some garlic and some onions and some andouille sausage that they boiled in seafood boil mix. And what they did was they just drained it really good, and then they had the tables were covered with newspaper. And they dumped it upside down. You ate with your hands. It was it was fine, and we really enjoyed it. And the food was amazing. They had great uh, uh, chocolate chip cookies for dessert, and then it was there back uh, to, uh, to the ship and get on the ship. Well, actually, when we got back over by the ship, we did walk around. Uh, that was when we took our tour of Creek Street. Um, and we've got some video and pictures of that. It was, again, that was a great day. Um, from Ketchikan, it was south toward Vancouver. Well, actually, somewhere in there I missed. I think it was out of coming out of Ketchikan, we actually went into Tracy Arm, or, or it might have been Tracy Arm between Skagway and, and Ketchikan. I don't have my dailies in front of me. But we did do, go to Sawyer Glacier and, and the Tracy Arm. Uh, that was an amazing um, 
uh, trip in. We had we had great weather. So we had, and you can see those pictures right here. They're just little thumbnails, but you can see them uh, right kind of in the middle of the of the screen there. Um, there's the glaciers. We're sneaking up on it. Now we're up right up close and personal with it. Um, it the colors were amazing. It was it was interesting watching the captain thread his way through uh, these uh, little narrow channels to get back in there. And he, he brought the ship up and spun the ship in 360 degrees. So if you were on your balcony, and we were eating dinner at this time, and I went up on deck and just captured some quick shots uh, from where we were eating. We had a great view, and it was uh, very, uh, we could see, but it, you couldn't get good pictures of it. So I did uh, go up on top to, to, you know, I just had booked a specialty restaurant and not planning well that day. But um, so we saw Sawyer Glacier. Uh, again, it was just one more. So that made, so we saw Tracy. We saw Mendenhall. Or we saw Sawyer Glacier. We saw Mendenhall. Uh, we saw Hubbard Glacier, and we saw Moose Glacier. So collectively, uh, on our um, trip, we saw, uh, well, and, um, and Stewart, Seward, I forget the name of the other glacier. But anyway, so we did see another glacier up there. Um, so we saw like six glaciers. Okay, I dropped connection for a second. Sorry about that. Um, like I said, it was just, uh, we really loved the trip. Um, going back into Vancouver, uh, Vancouver is a beautiful city. Uh, as you're sailing in, the harbor is amazingly busy. Right there where the cruise ship docks, there's uh, seaplanes taking off. There's traffic crossing the water every which way, it seems. It's, you're kind of like, okay, how do, how, do the, how do they get seaplanes in and out on a regular basis with all the boat traffic? But we enjoyed that. We went to the Gaslight District. Um, that was very interesting. And then we took the train from uh, Vancouver to Anchorage. We caught the train about 5.30. So we had about half a day to in uh, Vancouver that we saw things. Um, we grabbed the train uh, to Amtrak from Vancouver to Seattle. And another. It was again, it was another uh, great opportunity. We went uh, right along the, um, we went, right along the ocean uh most of the time the highway was on one side of us the ocean on the other you did pull back inland a little bit but uh for the most part it was right along the water we were right at sunset so it was uh we had uh, we had two fantastic train rides uh and everything about the the trip was amazing except the weather if we'd had clear sunny days uh, it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to touch a trip like this um any questions? I'll take questions. I answered Ron's. Um, hopefully, you heard that. Um, I can't, uh, but I would take other questions if anybody's got some. Um, looks like we're having a glitch with our internet stream. Um, let me go back to my YouTube. Uh, looks like I have lost my connection for some reason. Um, ho hopefully you'll get this, if nothing else, on the replay. Um, and anybody that's listening on the replay, please go ahead and feel free to hit the uh, hit the like button. You want to subscribe to the channel because there's going to be some amazing things coming down the pipe. Uh, we've got video from all of this trip, and I, I will say this too that. Um, uh, it's like I said, it was just an amazing trip and I will be uh, following up and if there are any comments coming I will be glad to go ahead and uh, answer questions in, on the replay as well uh, thanks for being with me today again please subscribe to the channel um, and if you like the video like the live uh, stream go ahead and hit the hit the like button let me know and we'll see you next time